The development of major countries instructs the pressures of Western urbanization and commercial reformation. These large-scale sweeping ripples stress all assets of life, expanding collective social transformation. Observing this in Iran, a land of rich resources and tradition, overwhelmed with political conflict and post-colonial regeneration, Iran's Ministry of Culture adopted the cinema, however, often utilized the technology for commercial gain and propaganda. It must be recognized that the social influx is reflected in cinema, as Iran is home to a cultural and artistic revolution. This phenomena came to be known as New Iranian Cinema. The expansion of Euro-modernity develops within institutions that regulate the cinema by rendering colonized people and their cultural histories invisible, a replication of real-world class structure. There exists a dependency here in envisioning cinema and its literary features within a fascination that doesn't involve the lived realities of the colonized and racialized, the poor, and the derelicts of war. Many filmmakers distinguish modernism by its implications of disintegration of society and the end of times. New Iranian cinema derived from a fundamental rejection of these narratives, though it proved to be an impossible task and even identified by its radicalism under the Ministry of Culture. <laughs> من خدافزی کردم لیستم رو میز ایشون موند و اومدم داشتم میمدم از اتاقش بیرون گفت که نمیخواید این نظرات ما رو ببرید مگه نمیخواید بسازین فیلم نامه رو گفتم چرا فیلم نامه رو میسازم ولی نه الان گفت پس که گفتم که ببینید شما امسال اینجا این چون پست شما پست دارید سال دیگه ممکنه رئیس سازمان تر ترافیک باشین دو سال بعدش رئیس سازمان گوشت ولی من جز فیلم سازی کاری بلد نیستم من سر جامم و احتمالا شما سال دیگه نخواهید بود و من این فیلم رو This institution dominated and controlled the film industry, establishing an approval system that hindered independent productions. The Shah of Iran, among the rest of the government, dealt with much diplomatic pressures from the great economic powers abroad, including Britain and the U.S., who demanded control over the country's oil industry. In 1952, Iranian Prime Minister Mohammad Mossadegh cut all diplomatic relations with Britain and formally declared the European country an enemy state. Subsequently, Britain lost access to the country's resources and in an attempt to counter, gained aid by the U.S. The CIA launched Operation Ajax, which plotted to overthrow Mossadegh by bribing the Shah to issue a decree. Eventually, the coup succeeded after fear of a communist takeover. Thus, Mossadegh was exiled and his supporters convicted and executed. This extremely confidential plot became a significant point of interest for the Iranian Revolution of 1979, sparked by political denouncement of U.S. interference in Iran. Amidst efforts of resistance and volatile political tensions, the cinemas in the metropolis areas were targeted and destroyed. However, many film productions remained active during the chaos. Circling back to this idea of invisibility, those stories focusing on the struggles of the lower class, the movement's relationship with revolutionary politics demonstrated its ability to survive instability. New Iranian cinema developed as an extension of early ethnographic documentaries from the 60s that substantiates its rejection of modernity. This anthropological study of interest was funded by the state that commissioned filmmakers. A social restructuring influenced the utilization of film to capture pre-colonial traditions as well as pre-industrialized landscapes, leading to its title. For example, the Jin's Wind, documented and shot by Nazar Tagvai, observes the Afro-Iranian traditional ceremony aimed at healing the sick from bad spirits. Many young filmmakers shared a collective frustration and began telling stories centering the well-being of citizens in a world post-war. Thus, many depictions of characters experience heightened levels of PTSD, mental disintegration, and violent delirium. <laughs> It's difficult to pinpoint 
the start of a film movement as every other, since it's dependent on political stability and historical phenomenology. In 1963, Farooq Farooqsad shot a documentary titled The House is Black, describing the socially condemned lives of a leper colony in northern Iran. The grim short documentary sought to humanize the victims of leprosy and weaves in Farooqsad's poetry with Islamic passages. It can be argued that this film was the earliest shift into the new wave. New Iranian cinema can be best traced back to Dairish Maruchui's 1969's The Cow. This unconventional drama explicates social alienation and paranoia after main character, a small town villager Hassan, discovers his beloved cow and signifier of his status has unexpectedly died. This erratic tragedy supports a traumatic wave of fear and anxiety amongst a small indigenous village. Hassan's grief spells transforms gradually into psychological distress as he begins to believe he is a cow, adopting animalistic behaviors. The film concerned the Shah, believing it didn't represent holiness. Eventually, New Iranian cinema gained global status recognition in 1997 when filmmaker Abbas Kiristami's Taste of Cherry won the Palme d'Or at Cannes Film Festival. The film follows Mr. Badi, who drags around the outskirts of Tehran in search for someone who can promise to bury him after he commits suicide. Kiris Dami emphasizes social degeneration and the taboo subject of suicide. During this period, many Iranian filmmakers were more influenced to experiment with story and intertwine poetic literary features. Remaining one of the most successful and acclaimed film movements, New Iranian cinema has undoubtedly reflected the material conditions of its society and advocated for revolutionary practices in many forms. Access to many of these films remains limited today and other distributions were solely released as VHS. Yet, despite this, it's been an axiom in cinematic history, being a source for filmmakers across generations.